Now, one of the beauties of the creation, and for me, one of the greatest proofs of the existence of God, is that if you do not believe in God, you will live in a world that is godless. And I really think that that is a proof for the existence of God. Because if you believe in God, you will live in a world filled with God. But if you disbelieve in God, you will constantly be reaffirmed in your disbelief. And that's why atheists can't understand people that believe in God and people that believe in God can't understand atheists because both of them are seeing a proof for their belief. They really are. And that's one of the meanings I think of the hadith, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I am in the opinion of my servant. So if my servant thinks I'm nothing, <laughs> that's what he finds. Allah is in the understanding of the, the believer. So if you believe Allah is with you, Allah is with you. If you don't believe he's with you, he's not with you. And that's why despair is haram in every Abrahamic tradition. It, it's haram. And, and in Catholicism, it's, it's the unforgiven, unpardonable sin in Catholicism. To despair from the mercy of God is, is actually the one thing they say is not forgiven. And that's Iblis Ablesa. You know, that's his disease. He despaired. And so he wants everybody else to despair. So part of the, the game that's being played in the world is to make everybody think that it's all horrible. And whenever you talk to people that don't believe in God, or people in this age in particular, that's what, what do they say to you? Look around you. How can you believe in God? Well, that's my whole point. I'm looking around. How can I not believe in God? So where's the problem? The problem is in what they call evil. And this is ultimately what every argument against the existence of God rests upon. It rests upon what they call the problem of evil. And that is why if somebody tells you they don't believe in God, what you should ask them to do is explain to me what your definition of God is because we might not believe in that same thing. In other words, I might agree with you that I don't believe in that thing because one of the things that they've done is that they're trapped in a Christian Manichaean worldview, which is where good and evil are separate entities. Whereas we believe good and evil are both creations of Allah. See, the Christians can't explain evil because they say God is all good and God is all powerful. Well, if God's all good and all powerful, how do we explain evil in the world? Because if he's all good, he wouldn't create evil. And if he's all powerful, he would remove it from the world. This is, I mean, this is the, what they call the problem of evil in philosophy. That's the argument. So that is ultimately what atheists have a problem with. So one of the benefits of this is that we had scholars that looked at tribulations and said, never think something is evil because you don't know. Now, on the one hand, we have a sharia that says killing is evil, right? So if somebody kills another person unjustly, that's evil. And you have to, the person should be punished or forgiven or whatever is done. But it's a wrong that needs to be redressed. So sharia is, is something that we have to live with, the law that Allah has given us. Just like here in this society, we have laws. Many of them are congruous with our system of law, and that's what, Raghub al-Isbahani calls al-adal al-muttaqa, which is shared by Muslims and non-Muslims. And then you have what's called al-adal al-muqayyada, which relates to the sharia or the sacred law that a specific prophet has brought. And that adala can actually change. It can actually change. But adala muttaqa, it's wrong to take somebody else's property. Everybody agrees on that. And that's the basis of entering into transactions with non-Muslims. And that's why Muslims can transact with non-Muslims. Because if we didn't have a shared understanding of justice, there's, we couldn't communicate. But every non-Muslim who's got any brains at all will agree with us on many basic points. And this is how it's capable for Muslims and non-Muslims to live together uh, based on these shared things. There are other things where we disagree. And then the sharia has ways of dealing with that. In a Muslim society even, non-Muslims are allowed to do things that Muslims aren't allowed to do.